Gun Sports Radio is sponsored by Love Radio Network. Welcome to Gun Sports Radio, all about shooting, hunting, self defense, and more. Now, here are the hosts of Gun Sports Radio, Dave Stahl and Lance Pelkey. All right, folks. Hey, it's the shot. It's your shining light. We are Gun Sports Radio. Show number 101. Here we are, Dave. Every Sunday, 4 to 5, folks. Bring it. Absolutely. Don't forget to visit our website, gunsportsradio.com. Facebook, go to Gun Sports Radio as well. And we want to thank Gun Range San Diego. Without their help, I tell you, it would be really tough to do this show. 7853 Balboa Avenue, 10 to 10, seven days a week. Absolutely nobody beats uh, Gun Range San Diego. I call it the Nordstrom's. Of gun ranges is what I call it. I was down there on July 4th for their big sale. Oh, they just blew it out. I walked in there about at 1 o'clock, and it looked like a bomb went off in there. Really? And they blew out all this great stuff at, like, minimal prices. And, oh, my Lord. Yeah. And so Wait, it was really good. We're live, by the way, on Facebook. Did you buy anything? No, it was all gone. It was all gone. <laughs> oh, so you yeah, didn't even get to buy nothing? It was all gone. Yeah. Oh, so I took Mara there, and we had a good time. So. Oh, well, that's good. Did you go shooting? I did not. Oh. Nope. I just checked on the sale. That's all I was doing. And, so and it was terrific. Michael yeah. Schwartz just bought everything. Somebody came in there and bought a bunch of stuff. A bunch of the members were there. And and Schwartz had that goofy look on his face. You know <laughs> who it was. No, nah, I, I wasn't able to buy anything. I spent the 4th of July at the fair. You were at the fair? I was at the fair. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. We were eating stuff we shouldn't eat oh. and buying stuff we shouldn't have bought. But uh, it was fun. It was fun. I heard the sale at the Gun Range San Diego was awesome, though. Yeah, yeah. I just I just missed uh, Veronica and everybody, but uh, they had a bunch of um, also uh, range guns that they refurbed and and just blew out as well. So that's good. And by the way, I have my CCW first uh, uh, appointment coming up on Thursday. Hey, look at me! Nice. Ta-da! So, ladies and gentlemen, get out there and do it. So, uh, work with Mike Schwartz on he's Mike's been helping me with uh, the good cause statement. Yep, we've been up on our website. If you go to uh, San Diego County Gun Owners dot com slash CCW, or if you just go to our homepage and click on CCW, we put up a twelve minute video yep. that walks you through the process, mm-hmm. uh, talks about how to write a good cause mm-hmm. statement, and then we even have a two page uh, uh, good cause worksheet that helps you that walks you through mm-hmm. writing your good cause statement, and uh, we even have sample. Uh, uh, good cost statement. I think we have about two dozen sample good cost statements from people that have uh, uh, gotten approved. So, uh, and so far, everything's been going really well. I, I, it's still a bear of a process. It's not easy. It's not what it should be. But uh, people are getting approved. Um, I'm getting calls every uh, every day. I was just at you know Poway Weapons and Gear had their expo yesterday, which by the way, we signed up 28 new members in uh yeah. just just yesterday that's and, great and, and, and friday night but people are coming up to me yep. hey i got my ccw thanks for the help you know here's my ccw wow pretty what amazing a long way well you know and it, also it's a big responsibility you know that's so, a big responsibility to to have that you know to to carry like that I it's mean, an enormous responsibility and like i said it's it's not a perfect process yet but we've worked really hard to get to where we are and we're going to continue to improve this process but uh yeah you got to get the training you know go down to the gun range san diego uh get the training take classes you know we, we say all the time you, you know no one needs a three thousand dollar gun they need you know a thousand dollar gun and two thousand dollars worth of training <laughs> yeah oh well, and speaking so. of that so um i will be taking their uh ccw class but they also have like a pre-class that manny puts on and the pre-class really has to do with well, you know, just because you got a, a, a CCW, how are you going to carry the thing? Right. Where are you going to carry it? That's a big deal. Duct I mean, tape you, it to your forehead. Oh, whatever. I mean, are you going to do it as a, you know, in the belly, uh, under the belly, you know, you under know, the armpit. under the armpit, or, you know, what the heck? It's, it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting. So because yeah, once you get done and now you have it, now what do you do? What do you do? Yeah, what do you do? Yeah, make sure because it's got to be concealed. Right. Make sure that uh, the first day you carry is not the not the first time you've considered what, what you're going to carry. And then and carry. then you know can, can you drive within a thousand feet of a school? I guess you've got some questions coming up on that. Yeah, we are. We're putting together. We're actually putting together a, a video. Um, uh, that's, that's helpful. It's going to talk with. Yeah, we're going to talk to some CCW instructors and basically you know top ten questions about CCWs in, in California. Let us know when that comes out yeah can you carry can you drive by a school if you're carrying can you go into a bar can you go into a restaurant that has a bar think about can that you, can you have a drink at all if you have a ccw you know um, there's a lot of questions because if you don't know then all of a sudden you know the cops show up and, and you're getting arrested is not an excuse not right, right. and it's it's complicated 
you know. Enormously complicated. Uh, speaking of things that we have coming up, and on Friday, this Friday, it's the Friday before the gun show. Gun show is on the 13th, or on the 14th, 15th. This Friday, uh, the 13th at 11 a.m. at the fairgrounds in front of the Don Diego statue, we are going to have a press conference. Um, and it is our $10,000 gun show challenge. Uh, and it is a challenge to the, uh, the some of the anti-gun organizations in town, the Brady Organization and Moms Who Hate Guns and all those anti-Second Amendment organizations. I'm not going to go into details, but it's going to be a huge, huge announcement. Uh, it's going to be a huge uh, uh, a challenge. Uh, we're putting our money where our mouth is. We expect them to do the same. And uh, so if you are able to come down and join us at the press conference, uh, come on down. We're, we're, we've, we're going to announce the uh, press release will come out uh, Friday and we're going to have, uh, you know, it'll be covered TV and radio. And uh, but it's going to be a big deal. You know, I just had an idea. Um, why not work with Bob and why, why not ha- ha- have Bob let all your members th- come in for free? You know, what? well, they're actually they're it's they're getting it. We uh, we did talk about that. It's actually Tracy we're working with. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, that's his daughter. That, yeah, that heads yep. up the, the gun show, and it's uh, San Diego County gun owners members are, I believe, are getting two dollars off. So we're working on that. They're getting two dollars off entry. And how much does it cost to get in normally? <laughs> I forget. I think it's uh, I think it's eleven, twelve bucks, twelve, thirteen. But bucks. you know what? It's for, worth your second for all the, right for all the support. You know. That, that you've done for them, I think that's would be reasonable that they would get them for free. That's just my vote. <laughs> well, well, they got to pay for parking. I'll talk to them. I'll see what. It, yeah, well, yeah. think about it. I mean, how many? Uh, I showed up as a member, uh, you know, to the meetings. How many of your members have showed up, and how much time have you given? And so, for them to be able to show up, and if they show up, I think you know, if they have the little pin and walk around with a pin, you know, I think that'd be really good. Make that pin worthwhile. Well, because you know, how many more shows are they going to have there? Well, it's a good question. I, but I, we're going to make sure it continues on for Is a long time. Is that still up in the air? Well, they're going to meet and talk about it in uh, in August, as I believe is the next meeting. And, uh, you know, uh, up in Orange County, they just renewed the contract uh, to, for the next uh, three shows. And uh, so they, they renewed it and said uh, that, yeah, they're going to have the uh, – the next three shows, but there is a 30 day out. So it's one of these deals where you got to keep fighting. The other thing is, uh, I, th- I think it's prudent to start looking at other venues. You know, if the state owned, uh, venues are, are not going to respect a, you know, a law abiding, uh, useful, fantastic show like the gun show, then, you know, Hey, it's time to, time to stop giving them the revenue. So what became of the whole issue of, you know, Bob supposedly having some kind of background issues? Well, Bob, so Bob, Bob's not the – Tracy's the one that signs all the contracts. Sure. You know, Bob started it, um, but everything he's done is, is completely and totally illegal. Right. Um, but Tracy's the one that actually runs the show and signs okay. the contracts, and and uh, everything that they've done is on the up and up, and they've checked with, uh, you know, the DOJ. And what happened was the anti-gun folks started digging up dirt and, and uh, you know, embellishing things and yes. saying things that were – uh, you know, meant to uh, inflame. And, yeah, and uh, it just they're everything they've done is completely and totally legal. They have an impeccable legal record. They have an impeccable safety record. Um, so you know, by all means, they should be able to continue to do their their five shows a year. I got gotcha. you. And then changing gears for a second, um, for people who still in, are in California that have a AR that's quote not compliant, mm-hmm. they didn't catch up with the law. Uh, my understanding is if they they just take the upper off the lower or the lower off the upper and separate the two, then that works. It's not a functioning semi-automatic, yep. Right. And then, then so if you do, are in that situation, and then you want to figure out how to, you know, make it compliant, if that's what your goal is, then you could take the lower to your local gun shop, and then um, they they could help you. Yeah, take it it to the gun shop, see what their solutions are, see what they like. Um, There's a lot of different solutions out there. And, uh, you know, frankly, uh, as great as the bullet button was and it, and it filled a need, uh, I think there are a lot of solutions out there that are far better than, than the bullet button. I think, I, I think it's going to no, – don't get me wrong. I don't, wanna, I don't right. want people emailing me and saying, oh, Mike, it's horrible. I get it. It's bad. The law is bad. But I do think that there are solutions out there now um, that are probably a little bit better than the bullet button. Yeah. Well, I just want to throw that out there for people who haven't done anything yet. But yeah, if you and if, and if you if, haven't done anything yet, you should break them apart and keep them wherever you keep them. Don't keep them together just right. in case. Right. You so, have a medical emergency in your house or something. Right. If you separate the upper from the lower, you do not have a functional semi-automatic 
rifle. And if you need to uh, figure out what solution is best for you, just take the lower end and uh, talk to an FFL, and, and they should be able to hook you up. Yeah, I saw one of the solutions. Someone, um, I don't know what it's called, but it basically uh, turns the AR-15 into a. It fires twenty-two rounds long rifle. Well, there are a lot of twenty-two. There are a lot of ARs that are twenty-two. Like there are yeah, twenty-two conversion. conversions. Yeah, it's like oh, okay, for seventy-nine cool, yeah. bucks or something like that. Yeah, and the reason that works because the twenty-two is not center fire. Yep. All right. Hey, let's take a quick break. First off, we want to thank Trident Gunsmithing. Eight five eight five seven seven zero five seven six. Go to tridentgunsmithing dot com for all your hunting needs. Fabulous deals on rifles. They have hunting classes. They can do repair. Got one of the best gunsmiths in San Diego County. That's TritonGunsmithing.com, TritonGunsmithing.com. All right, folks. Hey, welcome back. You're listening to Gun Sports Radio. I'm Dave. He is Lance. Hey, the July 1st deadline is fast. It's gone, unfortunately. It's gone. To all you AR-15 owners, well, I tell you, you need to go over to CrossArmory.com for all your parts to make your AR-15 and AR-10 compliant. You may not be able to register it, but you at least need to make it legal. That's CrossArmory at www.CrossArmory.com for the best and easiest to use a compliant part. Simply to install, that's www.CrossArmory.com. Make sure you troll, tell him you heard it right here on AM 1170, The Answer. Hey, we got John Dillon on the line. Mr. Hey, how's it going, guys? Dillon, how are you today, sir? I'm good. Uh, you know, always willing to bring in some more uh, horrible information for California gun owners. <laughs> of <laughs> course. So, um, you know, uh, especially in the last couple of weeks, obviously, we've all been talking about the uh, the end of the registration deadline for assault weapons in California. Uh, and because that, you know, such a big and important thing to take care of, uh, another law that also went into effect on July 1st kind of got glossed over. And so I wanted to bring that up and discuss that. And that is the AB 857 firearm serialization requirements. Mm. So uh, get a lot of questions. One on of the that. Laws, yeah. So this is one of the laws that California went after to try to get and, uh, you, know, you know, control people who are making their own firearms, uh, you know, from 80% lower receivers for AR-15 platforms. I mean, you can get AK-47, you can get 1911s, Glocks, all that. Uh, and, you know, making your own gun has become, fairly popular, uh, especially in California, because of all of the regulations. So uh, on July 1st, 2018, you know, with the deadline, uh, now if you are going to make a, a firearm in California, uh, you have to first apply to the DOJ in order to get a DOJ-issued serial number. And, you know, kind of like the sole weapon registration, when you apply for a serial number, you're putting in, I think, I believe you even go onto the CFARS website, C-F-A-R-S, uh, and there's a link there for serialization uh, forms, and you submit all the you know personal information that you can, and they do run a background check on you. And once you do that, you get issued a serial number, which you then have 10 days to put on your firearm that you're going to make. Uh, and then once you make that, you then have to take photographs of the firearm with serialization on it and send it back to the DOJ. Uh, so that went into effect July 1st. So you know, anyone who's planning on making a, a firearm know that you know, it's now the law to request a serial number. And uh, you know, if you don't agree with this law and you choose not to do that, just know that it does come with misdemeanor violations if uh, you ever get caught. So it's a misdemeanor? Uh, yeah, for making a firearm without uh, giving proper serial numbers. That's so weird what they decide is a misdemeanor and what's a felony. I mean, you, you know, some magazine violations are, are felonies, some are misdemeanors, some assault weapon, or all assault weapons are 
it seems like are uh, um, mm-hmm. uh, felonies. felonies. Um, but then mm-hmm. no serials. Any any insight on that? Why? What makes them decide what's a what's a felony and what's a misdemeanor? You know, uh, I do not know uh, how they they go about doing it their way. Uh, every time they throw in a new law. It seems like they just, you know, throw numbers in a hat and figure out well, is it going to be a misdemeanor or a felony this time. I know. I'm always trying to. People are always trying to make. Way. Not really sure. We're always trying to make sense of the of the decisions that are made up in. Uh, yeah, good Sagarman. luck with that one. <laughs> they yeah. purposely keep us on edge. I mean, they purposely keep it this way so that we don't figure out what they're doing. Yeah, and there's a lot of confusion. Uh, there was a lot of confusion with the assault weapon registration. There's a ton of confusion with the serialization uh, requirements. Uh, and, you know, people are discussing that if you already engraved a serial number on your firearm, a firearm that you'd built in the past, uh, before July 1st, you know, uh, according to the uh, how the law is written, that should exempt you from having to apply to get a DOJ-issued serial number. But... Uh, the law is still requiring people to register any and all home built firearms by January first, twenty nineteen. Wow, interesting. So, if you want to build, yeah. say, if you go out and buy an eighty percent, you know, a, a block of metal today, mm-hmm. um, and you know, what's the process? What what exactly do, 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 does a person have to do? Yeah, before you even touch uh, that eighty percent lower, before you start milling it out, you are supposed to apply uh, on the DOJ website. For a serial number, you will then get a response back from DOJ with after they've done a background check on you, uh, and they will send you a serial number, and then you have to take that serial number and get it engraved onto your firearm. Is there a time uh, limit, or can, can, you, can you have? I believe it's ten days. Ten days. So I go out and buy a hunk of metal today. Tomorrow I go on the DOJ website and apply for a serial number, and then I'm assuming that takes, we don't. We probably don't. Do we know how long that would take? Yeah, honestly, I, I haven't had anyone contact my office yet uh, kind of explaining uh, that they've done this, and uh, I've, they haven't gotten a response from the DOJ yet. I'm waiting to hear back and see what the response time is from uh, the DOJ on issuing these serial numbers. But uh, I'm just going to guess and say that's probably going to be a slow process. Uh, nothing the DOJ does is very quick anyway. I got, uh-huh. I got a quick question. So when you buy that block yeah. of metal, then how does the DOJ know it was sold to you other than you well, reporting it? Again, this is the, the the big, you know, issue with this law is that if I'm a criminal and I'm and I'm prohibited, let's say I'm a felon and I, I know I can't sure. go and buy a gun, so I'm gonna go buy an eighty percent uh lower and and I plan to mill it out and use it in a crime. The only people who are going to apply for serial numbers right. are people that aren't going to commit a crime with the guns that they're making. I mean, logically speaking, if I'm a criminal right. with uh, you know, a murderous intent, I'm not going to like say, hey, DOJ, you know, just so you know, I'm making a gun so I can go rob my neighbor type thing. It's just the yeah. only... You know, law-abiding good people that you know want to follow the law are going to do this. So this law is strictly uh, a a law to control and get the information and register firearms of people who have not committed crimes. And yep. uh, th- that is at you know at its foundation, they just want the DOJ, California. They just want everyone's name attached to a gun so that, and they want it in their database and they want a record of who owns what at all times because they don't trust their own citizens to just own a gun. Right. And that's and, just how it is. And you say the penalty is a, a, a misdemeanor. Are you aware of any cases that have been brought forth about people getting caught with guns not serialized? Oh, uh, unserialized firearms, they have, you know, generally like in the past that usually would come with, you know, uh, the uh, obliteration or, you know, filing off serial numbers that you get, you know, when uh, crimes and all that. Sure. Uh, but with uh, you know, home-built firearms becoming more popular, I'm sure that the law enforcement are finding more firearms that have no serial numbers on them, not had them and were, you know, filed off, but just you know, homemade guns. And, you know, uh, like I said, this law, it's not going to help, you know, anyone who 
is trying to enforce the law because it's they're only going to go after people who you know want to obey the law and this is only going to give the state more information and, you know, you're going to have to pay fees to do this. And it's just another revenue source for state of California. And it's a way to make sure everyone's on a list. So what, so once you back to the process, once you get your, so you get your, your number back, um, mm-hmm. with, who knows how long that'll take. And then you have 10 days to go get it engraved onto the, uh, onto the, the receiver. Mm-hmm. And then, and then what? Are you are you done, or do and you have you, to? When you mill it, when you you know, mill out the firearm and everything, you uh, according to AB eight five seven, the person shall notify the department of the fact and uh, of that fact, and in a manner and within the time period specified by the department, and with sufficient information to identify the owner of the firearm, the unique serial number or mark. Uh, of identification. Uh, so they go down the list. Basically, you got to you notify the DOJ and they require pictures uh, of the firearm. Uh, so you got to take a picture of your gun, just like with the assault weapon registration, how I think they required four different photographs, uh, you know, both sides of the whole firearm, the close ups of the serial numbers and all the uh, information. They're likely going to require the same exact thing uh, when it comes to home built firearms. So and serialize it, then the, mill it, then take pictures of it and send it in. Yeah. Wow. You got to do all that. Uh, and, you know, and you got to remember when you're building these things, depending on what platform you're using, you got to make sure whatever you're building is in and of itself compliant and, and legal. And you can't can't be making anything that would, you know, meet the definition of an assault weapon. You can't be, you know, making illegal handguns. Uh, you can't, you gotta, there's, this is something that we can go on and on. And I think, uh, the CRPA and Michelle associates just did a webinar on this where they discussed AB 857. I would encourage anyone that's even considering this to review that. Uh, and, uh, you know, cause you gotta get a lot of information. If you're going to go down this road, California has now made it very difficult, uh, to do this without running afoul. Like it's, it's easy to miss the technical, you know, you know, aspect of how to do this process and you know what you can and can't make, and then you can get yourself in trouble. So uh, it's something that you really need to pay attention to from now on uh, because California, they are paying attention to home-built firearms. Uh, you know, we have a proposed legislation right now for precursor parts. This is the state is trying to make it, to where you have to get a background check to buy an 80% receiver uh, and also parts. So if you yeah, want to buy like a, a barrel spring. or a slide or a spring, yep. you have to do background check. Like, and this is, I believe it's almost at the governor's desk. It's not there now. Uh, so they're wholly trying to go after people making their own guns. They don't want it to happen. They want people's names on a list with whatever they have made. Sure. That's their goal. Yeah. All right, buddy. Hey, well, thank you very much, folks. You can call John Dillon, 760-431-9501, or go to www.cafirearmslaw.com. He's happy to chat with you. He belongs to the Gatsky Dillon and Balance LLP law firm, and John specializes in gun handling and all the laws that go with your ownership of guns and Second Amendment rights. cafirearmslaw.com. CAFirearmsLaw.com. Thanks, buddy. Hope to see you in studio sure. soon. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. All right, we're going to take a small break. We come back. A whole lot more right here on AM 1170. All right, folks. Hey, welcome back. Gun Sports Radio right here on AM 1170. The answer. I'm Dave. He <laughs> is Lance. Bring it, baby. Hey, you're here. You heard us talk about the importance of having a great company like Firearms Legal Protection. Well, you probably wonder why. Well, do you or any of your family keep a firearm or a weapon for personal protection? You know, what happens if you're involved in an incident? What if somebody breaks in and you have to defend yourself? Well, what is your plan to pay for a bail and all the expenses a lawyer costs? Yeah, because you could very easily get arrested. They don't automatically take your word. Well, if you talk to the good folks at Firearms Legal Protection for 
less than $10 a month, you'll have peace of mind knowing a 24-hour hotline and legal representation is waiting for you and your family. That's Firearms Legal Protection at www.firearmslegal.com or give them a call at 469-310-9100. That's firearmslegal.com. Check these boys out. I had lunch with them on Friday. Did you really? Yeah, they're, it's what a great organization. What a great group. They we're uh, we're a uh, little teaser. We're going to have an, uh, an event in August coming up, so stay tuned to listen for that. We're going to have a very cool seminar coming up. With, okay, fi- cool. with Firearms Legal? Firearms oh, Legal Protection. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. Is our man uh, Jason on the line? A uh, new. What? New. No. Well, I'll that's okay. Him. I'll text him. I'll let you guys go after him. Hey, by the way, this segment is brought to you by Gun Range San Diego. Gun Range San Diego is the Nordstrom's of gun ranges, uh, but just not the price. So I don't want you to think that it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. It's not. 7853 Balboa Avenue in San Diego, 10 to 10, seven days a week. Just go to www.thegunrangesandiego.com. They will take care of all of your gun needs, everything from selling you a gun to uh, training. Uh, they even have parties, if you can believe that. They do have parties. They do have parties. Hey, yeah. you know, they also do. They support uh, the political uh, candidates that are into the 2A deal. So. The old San Diego County Chris gun Kate, owners. You know, they do. They, they have, do. Yeah, they, I mean, they're enormously supportive when it comes to Second Amendment. Uh, you know, and that's it's something I, I get asked a lot from people is, hey, which shops and ranges in town, uh, you know, support my rights? And uh, the Gun Range San Diego does a fantastic they job. Really yeah, that. Veronica's Fun really stepped up for that. We're having ATF night coming up in uh, a couple months. Uh, the, uh, there's a group called the Young Republicans. Oh, that's great. Uh, which are Republicans I'm too that old. are. Yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. I tried. So am I. I'm too old. <laughs> yeah. Get away from me. Yeah, you got to be older than a college Republican, but under 40 yeah, uh, to I'm be done. a Young Republican. Yep. But they're going to have ATF night, and uh, we're going to have a bunch of people going down there. We're going to have a, a smorgasbord of, of guns for them to uh, to. So they're uh, doing a gun range San Diego again this year? Gun range San Diego. Oh, that's really cool. They're cool. very supportive. Cool. Hey, good. Jason's on the line. Look Trump. at that. What's the matter, bud? You busy? Uh, quite busy. Very, very busy. <laughs> but we don't want to hold you up. So speaking of busy, yeah. uh, uh-huh. you guys had a busy 4th of July. We sure did. Yeah, you had Very. a bunch of members that came in what at nine thirty and just blew all your stuff out. Uh, we had we had a we had a lot of the uh, a lot of used guns. They went. I mean, we had we had about twenty of them, and they're pretty much all gone the first couple hours. It was a it was a good kind of zoo. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a feeding frenzy, shall we say? It definitely was. That was that was a much better term for it. Gotcha. Big and- shark tank, and there was a giant feeding frenzy. <laughs> That's really good. And what about today? What's happening? Today, uh, it's got a lot of people, a lot of questions about, uh, you know, the, you know, of course, we've just ha- gone past June 30th, so the new AR thing, people are still asking questions, as expected. Yep. Uh, that, and, uh, yeah. Gotcha. And so you have solutions for people if they, you know, still haven't done anything yet? Oh, yeah, of course. Yep. That's good. And then okay. Um, okay. you and I were talking about what today? Was uh, it? Well, bullet weights. Bullet grain weights, was that it? Bullet wain, uh, weight grade, grains, yes. That's right. Yeah, yeah, bullet, uh, you know, a lot of people will use uh, different bullet grain weights for different things. Uh, you know, commonly something like 9mm will use 115 grain, and that's that's kind of the standard. Uh, 124 grain is what the military uses. A lot of people prefer that. Um, then you get the heavier stuff, match grade 9mm, tends to be 135 or 124. Uh, 147, you can go all the way up to 147 for 9mm and 150 to uh, get some extra weight to the bullet. Heavier bullets tend to fly more stable, so uh, people tend to shoot better with that stuff. That's why most people tend to shoot better with forty-five than nine mil. Yep, uh, and so uh, oh, so a lot of people at the range basically just shoot the one fifteen because they're you know target stuff. Right, right, right. Got it. It all costs you know pretty much you know all about the same, but you know if you really you really, really take a box of one twenty four, one fifteen, most people tend to do better with the one twenty four. Yeah. Now, I'll actually get people ask me to you know, special order them a case of you know a certain ammo type. Uh, a common one is Cellier and Bellow. Cellier and Bellow ammo is uh, more consistently accurate, and the 124 is uh, pretty much all any of us who work here at the range want to shoot. I gotcha. So if, if someone has a personal protection uh, you know, weapon, then they should probably keep something like that in there. They're at the range. They want to shoot something a little right. less expensive. So right, all right, absolutely. Yeah, they could you could accommodate them that way. And then what about right. for, what about for forty five? Forty five. Well, most forty five is two thirty grain. That's you know that's the original 
you know, 230 grain military ball. Uh, lighter rounds, if you want to get extra velocity, a little extra, you know, maybe a little extra range out of that round, uh, or a little flatter trajectory, you can go to a 185 grain uh, or 200 grain 45. Uh, it'll move a little bit faster. It'll zip along. Want to get something heavier? I've seen 45 go up to 250 grain. It's a really heavy box for or a box of 45, and that will fly uh, even more stable. But at that point, it's like shooting a cannonball. It's a very slow round. Got 230 it. is kind of the ideal, and the ideal for 45. Yeah. So and the same goes for you know rifle rounds. Oh, okay. Like what? Like a, well, you know, five five six. You know, 55 grain, 62 grains. What most people shoot. Um, Match grade ammo for you know for for five five six will always be something like you know sixty eight seventy grain uh, three oh eight for people who shoot really far three oh eight um, I mean most three oh eight that that's cheap is you know one forty seven one fifty something like that all match ammo is typically heavy on a three oh eight the one sixty eight and one seventy five are kind of the preferred grain weights for match grade you know match, match shooters people who shoot you know six hundred seven hundred eight hundred yards and they'll hit what they're what they're aiming at every time. Got it. And then, uh, you know, a lot of people also, I guess, for, you know, smaller firearms uh, pistols, they'll mm-hmm. use, a, you know, like a three eighty. So what kind of grain for a three eighty? Mm-hmm. Three eighty grain, you know, you can get it as light. Uh, with three eighty, higher velocity is usually recommended. You can get something like uh, frangible rounds that, that break up on contact. You can get frangible rounds that are super light, you know, 80 grain, 90 grain. Um, 380 is just like a diet 9 millimeter, so it's just a little bit lighter. Most 380. It's just called a diet 9 millimeter? Grain. That's pretty funny. It's basically what it is, yeah. 9 millimeter, you know, what we all know is 9 millimeters, 9 by 19 parabellum or Luger. Um, 380 is, it's called 9 millimeter short everywhere else. It's uh, 9 by 17. The diameter is just taken down just a little bit, but it's basically diet 9 millimeter. Yeah. But we're talking that's about like like, like for a forty five. You said, and that's mm-hmm. my experience too. Is about two hundred thirty grains yeah. is pretty much kind of, right. kind of the max. And th- I mean, we're talking that's half an ounce. Just just so everybody, that right? Is, about half an ounce. That's, that's right. Yeah, it's about half an ounce. That's right. And that's just the projectile itself. That is that is twice the weight of most you know most nine mil you know one fifteen grain. Um, it's a big. It, it's it's just a little cannonball. That's what it is. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Well, and also too, it's neat. I mean, a lot of people have bought different, you know, firearms or, over over the years, and you know, they're using them yeah. or they're sitting around or whatever. But you know, just having a discussion, mm-hmm. going to the gun range, in San Diego, you know, talking with you, or talking with someone else down there, and just talking about you know ammo instead of just buying something on the mm-hmm. shelf is you know, is, is now people could see, listeners could hear that you know it really makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's always, it's always beneficial to just ask us, you know, if you have any, you know, if we have any experience with with uh, bullet grain weights. And a common question is, you know, what will my gun, you know, that I just bought, what will my gun like the most, ammo wise? And you know, something um, like an all steel pistol will will handle, you know, uh, plus P or plus P plus rounds, you know, really heavy, uh, not heavy, uh, higher pressure rounds from the factory. They're like extra extra damaging hollow points, things like that. A steel gun will handle that better than a polymer gun. Um, there's little little things like that. A lot of people uh, I mentioned. A lot of people uh, ask for cellular and bellow because it, it's so it's so dang clean and consistent. And a lot I, I get a few customers. Uh, I got a handful of people who ask me to to order that specifically for them. Oh, nice. Um, so you can always ask us anything like that. Yeah. Well, well speaking anything of that, ammo, yeah. Do you guys still have like nine millimeter on sale or something? We do. We do. It's uh, it's still uh, it's one ninety nine. One ninety nine for a thousand rounds. Of nine mil. Yeah, and plus, if someone wanted to order case. something else, they could just just ask you. Oh yeah, you can ask me anything you guys need to. Any any ammo you need, if you can get in bulk, we'll do something for you. Yeah, that's all you have to do is ask. And you had the sale on uh, Fourth of July mm-hmm. and blew out a bunch of uh, uh-huh. you know uh, refurb range guns. Did you guys re- replace mm-hmm. them? Did you add more to your inventory? W- what's happening? All right, we so so what we did is we we replaced them. You know about about. You know, a couple of weeks in advance, we replaced them, and you know, as they came off, we cleaned them up, make sure they functioned properly, all that stuff. But yeah, you know, they've all been replaced. Gotcha. Okay. There's a couple so you, new things out there too. Like what? Uh, well, we have a we have a Sig P220 Desert Black. It's kind of a special version of the uh, the seat of the, the P220 Sig. Really good 45 single stack. Okay. Uh, it's one of them. We uh, we got the uh, still got that Glock 17 L out there. Super long barrel L. If you mm. miss with that, it's all you. Wow, <laughs> we got a couple. We got a lot of toys. How much longer is the L? The, the, the L is a uh, the L is a six inch barrel. So it's like a, like a like a nineteen eleven 
like an old school 1911 long slide. It's a really long barrel uh, used for, you know, pretty much exclusively for competitions. But that gun is so accurate. Um, it's a lot of fun. You can, you can put it in the hands of a novice and it will, and you'll come out looking like a pro. So it's what, a great one, great one to check out and rent. What's the difference between a 34, what you said it was a 17L? Yeah, it's called a 17L. So the 34 is a 5.25 inch barrel. Wow. Uh, the L is extremely light. It's a, it's a six inch, and it almost looks ludicrous, but it uh, it's so accurate that you, know, you just there's there's you, you'll stop thinking it looks funny once you shoot with it. Well, I, I watched John um, Trebisi. You know, uh, he's mm-hmm. uh, on the board with San Diego County Gun Owners, and I've watched him yeah. shoot the Glock 34, and I thought that thing mm-hmm. was huge. But anyway, that's, that's that a long barrel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's going to oh, yeah. look like Clint Eastwood or something. So anyway, cool, oh, yeah. man. All right. Well, uh, we appreciate you coming on. You've got uh, what uh, right. specials on Monday and Tuesday night coming up Wednesday night. That's it. That's right. And, uh, Monday, all the, all the, you know, $10 rentals are free. That's free rental night. Tuesday, it's $5 to shoot after five. So I'd come on by those two days. Gotcha. All right, buddy. Well, hey, thank you very much for taking time out of your day. Now, well, thank you. Get back to work. Yeah, get back to work. Yes, sir. Right here Thanks. on Guns Sports Radio, AM 1170. Because of- Sports Radio, right here on AM 1170. We are the answer. Uh, and we want to thank uh, the good folks at, uh, oh, here it is. Do you or any of your family keep a firearm or a weapon for personal protection? That's them. Do you have or are you going to get a CCW? Well, if you're involved in an incident, what are you going to do? What is your plan of attack? Well, like most of us, you don't have one. So for a little less than Ten dollars a month, firearms legal will take care of you and your family, twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week, with or without you. That's firearms legal protection at www.firearmslegal.com. Give them a call six one nine. I mean six one nine four six nine three one zero ninety one hundred. That's four six nine three one zero ninety one hundred. Or as we like to say at Gun Sports Radio, do you want to be proactive or reactive? Ooh. So like let's it. be proactive and call Firearms Legal Protection. Ten, less than ten dollars. Trust me, that's not even lunch. Uh, so hey, so we got open mic. See, it even says open mic. And since we have Mike in the house, yeah, we have Mike in the house. I'll be open. I'll You're be open. open. With you. So yeah, so I wanted to tell everybody about our uh, summer picnic. We uh, you know we normally have three meetings a month: uh, North County, South County, Central. And we decided, hey, it's July, it's the middle of the summer, let's do something fun. Uh, Spy Optic, the sunglass uh, guys, the manufacturers of sunglasses, oh, yeah. yep. great company, big company. Um, they said, hey, we want to host a meeting. And we decided, we went and saw their facility. They have a beautiful facility up in, in Carlsbad. You've been there, have you, Lance? I've been there, and I've got to tell you, and for the listeners, that place is awesome. As far as eyewear is concerned, um, they started off doing ski mm-hmm. glasses and all that. So the glass is amazing. The styles are amazing, and they have stuff s- specifically for shooting sports. Mm-hmm. So right. it's and that's, awesome. And it, that's yeah. a, that, that led to a discussion of, hey, we want to host a meeting. Yep. And we just, and they have a really big, huge facility. And I said, well, you well, all got to be there. It's all got to be, be there. Yeah. There's going to be giveaways, food, drinks. Yep. Yeah. Drinks are free. We're going to have uh, beer and soft drinks. That's <laughs> They're free. buying the beer. So come yeah. on. Yeah. Five bucks gets you all you can eat tacos. Um, and then we're going to have a, a free raffle. So we're going to raffle off a bunch of cool stuff. There'll be giveaways and fun. And this is a really good opportunity, one, to have a lot of fun. Uh, and two, bring a friend and say, hey, this is an organization I'm interested in and, a, and I'm a part of. And uh, introduce them to you know some of the leadership. Check out Spy Optics or some of the uh, sunglasses they have. And uh, it's just going to be a really good 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 time. It's and it's it's Wednesday. Let me give you the date. It is July eighteenth from six p.m. on. So show up anytime. Lance is going to be there. Hopefully, Dave's going to be Dave's there. Dave's going to be there. You're going to meet the guy uh, Mark Van Buskirk, and he runs the uh, Spy Optic um, uh, Law Enforcement Tactical um, Division. Amazing guy. So you're going to meet a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of people there, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's up in Carlsbad. 
at the Spy Optic headquarters, which is 1896 Rutherford Road. Uh, but we also we have the flyer. If, if you're not getting our emails yet, uh, you know, sign up to get our emails, and you, you'll we're sending it out on via email. But you can also go to our website, and it's right there on the homepage, San Diego County Gun Owners dot com. And we know it's you know San Diego is a little tough to drive around San Diego County. You know, around six o'clock at night, I get that. But I'll tell you what, it's worth it. Yeah. So leave a little early, you know, and enjoy the drive. Take but a walk on the beach. It's just a it's just a, a great venue. Mark is a great guy. You've got a great uh, you got great giveaways it's it's a they're always first class events but this one's this one's really going to do it so you know, come have some tacos yeah. with us and again I'm it, really it, it starts it. at six but you know show up at seven show up at seven thirty. show up at eight, whatever we're going to be there all evening having fun uh you know doing doing a lot of really great things yeah Talk that's a, it's a really great event. it's a wednesday night it's wednesday, a wednesday night. night yep and that takes the place of our normal monthly meetings um so like i said we just wanted to have a good time and do something social and uh, we thought this was a good idea. Yeah. So the optics is gracious enough to buy everybody a beer. Why not? Why not? Nothing wrong with that. So, hey, let's talk a little bit about San Diego County gun owners. I mean, you had a horrendous uh, run of people yesterday, I understand. If we did. We had a fantastic. So there was uh, uh, um, Poway Weapons Gear had their annual expo, and they invite us out to have a booth. They're fantastic. Um, Friday night, they had a, uh, it was just for members, you know, they had vendors, that sort of thing. And then Saturday all day, they had vendors and shoot guns and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, we had a booth there and in, you know, a day and a half, we signed up 28 new members, Wow, which is amazing. That's a record. <laughs> That's wow. a record. That's more than we've ever signed up at any event, uh, including any two day gun show. So 28 proud members. It was a great day of people coming up and saying, Hey, thanks to San Diego County gun owners. I, I got a, a, a CCW. I never thought I'd be able to. Wow. Um, we had a bunch of great uh, volunteers that helped us out, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, I, if you own any kind of gun in San Diego, you should belong to San Diego County Gun Owners. That's just the bottom oh, line. For, for anything, what, any for kind of gun, bucks, I don't care. You get an old deer gun sitting in your yeah. your whatever, but really to protect your rights and and to be the real boots on the ground. It's just there's just no doubt about it. Right. You know. Yeah, my wife got her Glock cleaned. For uh, for free, they were doing that. So uh, that's nice. Yeah. What about the springing? So if they she needed a new spring, you just charge her for it. Yeah, no, they didn't charge. It was all free. They, she asked, oh, you, did you lose a spring? No, 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 no. They replaced. They said, ah, these are worn. We're just going to give you new ones. They was just kind of. But the funny thing was, is uh, she sent me a text and said, you know, I told her, I said, hey, come on down this afternoon. You know, bring the Glock. They'll clean it. You know, and she said, well, I, I can't find the lock for the box. And I said, well, hun, just. You have a CCW now. You don't need that. You know, just oh, just, that's just right. Bring, yeah, yeah, just bring it in you a box, wings. and you don't and you're need. Go. You just can fly. Oh, that's yeah. right. Right. Doesn't have to. Wow. Just stick it in your pocket and show up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so she brought it down, and they they cleaned it up for for her, and uh, yeah, like I said, replaced a spring or two, and and it's all sparkly and shiny again. Now she won't want to shoot it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is all nice and clean, and I don't yeah. want to shoot it. But it just makes life so much easier. And then speaking of events, so coming up again this weekend is going to be this next weekend is the what the, the gun show. Gun show. Yep, gun show this weekend. We're going to and you're having a get together on Friday at noon. Friday is a press conference at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Yep, we're going to announce our uh, ten thousand dollar gun show challenge. Uh, so we're inviting people to come out if you can make it. I know 11 a.m. on a Friday is not the you know most people are at work, but if you can make it, you know, come out for take your lunch early. Take your lunch early. It's not going to be a long. Press conference? No, half hour. You know, you show up at uh, ten forty-five. You'll be gone. You'll be on the road at eleven thirty. Yeah, it's right there at the Don Diego statue. Um, you know, we're gonna have a bunch of news crews out there. I'm sure KUSI will be out there. Oh, sure. They always do a really good job of covering that kind of thing. And we're gonna announce our challenge, and then we're gonna be there all weekend talking about the Second Amendment, passing out copies of the press release, and uh, signing people up to be members and. Getting information out there and just uh, you know helping to gel the Second Amendment community, getting the word out. Right. Yeah. We got to get our show out there sometime. It'd be good. Well, it's a good time for people to get out there and get their parts before they do this new stupid AB law. That's you know they can't buy any parts without a background check. Yeah, really. So you yeah, know. and it's good. You know, it's it's. I got to tell you, just come out for no other reason. Come out and just support the gun show. They're they're really yeah. getting beat up unnecessarily. Uh, up in Orange County, we showed up at their. Uh, Agricultural District Board uh, turned in, I think it was 3,600 signed letters up there, uh, spoke on behalf of the gun show, and they, up in Orange County, actually renewed for another three shows, which is good. 
but down here in San Diego, they're really uh, they're really beating up. They don't care about your letters. They don't care about what the public says. Well, we it's not looking as good as as it does up in Orange County. That's what I said. We don't yeah. these guys down here don't care about our Second Amendment rights. Yeah, it's it's too bad. Um, it's really kind of ridiculous. But both venues are on state owned property, and they are just absolutely you know. There's a very small minority of extremists who uh, just aren't telling the truth about what happens at a gun show and. Unfortunately, they're 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 listening. Right. So, uh, well, because it's negative, because it's negative, and it's they negative. figure they equate a gun to a death, and not the fact that it's not the gun; it's the person pulling the trigger. Yeah, it it really doesn't make any sense. They're you know conflating uh, issues of crime with right. with issues well, and also crime. violence too. And and they don't understand that most people attend the gun shows were anti-violent people. That's yes. why we have guns. Because we are anti-violence. If we were not anti-violence, you know how many people would be dead? If gun owners were just murderers and that's all we wanted to do was shoot people? We are anti-violence people. We're anti. And, and they, never... they were to paint us as the violent folks, but we're not. They're actually the violent folks when you look on all the Facebooks and all the you see the latest and all the crazy stuff. About the lady and the two kids? Yeah. Guy tried to hijack her and she shot him in the face. In, yeah, in Texas. Well, you know, two two gun shows ago when we had our, our, yeah. our conference, we were the ones that had to pay for extra security against <laughs> against them. And I, I'm going, this is ridiculous. Yeah, so this you're is, against, so ridiculous. you know, violence, but here we are. We have to pay. This is the know. truth. That's why we'd like people listening to the show. Tell your friends. Right. Join San Diego County. Friday, 11 o'clock. Be there. Yep. Trust me. And on the 18th at 6 o'clock, Carl's bad. Dave. Dave. Yes. Dave, I think that should be a fun party. It's going to be awesome. Hey, folks, are you ready for the deadline? Well, guess what? You missed it. But that's okay. You can still go to CrossArmory.com and buy all the parts and pieces necessary to, to bring your AR-15 up and 10 up to compliance. Whether you can register it or not makes no difference. You can't just ignore it. You have to. If you're going to keep a 15 and a 10, you have to bring it to compliance. And CrossArmory.com has everything you need to do it. They'll have, they'll walk you through it, give you any information necessary, but go to www.crossarmory.com. That's crossarmory.com. They have got it totally figured out, so don't hesitate. Definitely do that. Hey, and we really want to thank all our sponsors, San Diego County Gun Owners, the Gun Range San Diego, cafirearmslaw.com. That's John Dillon, firearmslegal.com, Trident Gunsmithing, and last but not least, CrossArmory.com. Trust me, we just couldn't do it without them. Hey, and if you would uh, like to join us and, or any of our fine sponsors, you can email us at info at gunsportsradio.com, info at gunsportsradio.com. And don't forget to tune in next week. Tell all your friends, tell all your gun owners, tell all your folks that are even interested in guns to so tune in next Sunday, 4 to 5 with Dave Stahl, Lance Pelkey, Michael Schwartz, Jason Stevens, and John Dillon on AM 1170, The Answer. Sports Radio is sponsored by Love Radio Network.